I'm Shy Lynch, and I've been trying to sew everything I can for my wedding. Beastie helps too! <laughs> In this video, you're going to see part 3 of the 3-piece suit, the coat. I do want to say before we begin that I have never made a tailored suit before, so this whole thing has been a learning experience for me. Um, I will learn as much as I did during this video. I'm actually going to start with the first fitting. With only a couple weeks until the wedding, I knew I wouldn't be able to achieve perfect fit like a master tailor, but I had to address a few major issues. First, I had to move the shoulder seam forward 3 inches. He also mentioned how tight the armholes felt, which were prevalent with some puckering in the armpits, so I scooped out the armhole a little. Another key alteration was the lapel. I used Reconstructing History's morning coat pattern since it was the only morning coat pattern I could find. Right off the bat, I knew I had to change it to a single button coat, which also meant lengthening the lapel. I used 100% lightweight wool for this coat. The fabric felt really luxurious and cut like butter, but in hindsight, I know I should have used a heavier weight fabric. Here I'm making a slanted welt pocket. The instructions included period construction for the welt, but I followed a video, which I can link below, on how to sew a slanted welt pocket. I actually sewed right through my finger and fingernail during the pocket construction, which I did not record, so I can literally say that this coat was made with blood, sweat, and tears. The front of the coat is backed with horsehair canvas, which tailors use as a way to hold the shape of the front of the coat. The canvas will eventually form to your body as you wear the coat more, which is really what makes canvas different from interfacing. Interfacing can be used to save money, but it can also make the jacket too stiff, which you don't want. Another layer of canvas is cut about the same shape of the main piece. This piece ends at the lapel where the roll line is. To put the two pieces of canvas together, I use a technique called pad stitching. Pad stitching has a few purposes, to put two pieces of fabric together and to manipulate the shape of the fabric. Here I'm just stitching the pieces together. Another piece that I need is felt for the arm's eye. This is used to keep the fabric from collapsing around the armholes and the back of the coat. This is useful especially for this coat since I used a lightweight wool. After pad stitching the felt piece to the canvas layers together, I basted the canvas to the main fabric. Now I'm adding tape to the roll line. The roll line is where the lapel rolls over or folds. Mm -hmm. 
Earlier, I mentioned the pad stitching can be used to manipulate the shape of the fabric. Here, I'm pad stitching over the curve of my finger so the lapel wants to naturally fold over at the roll line. Now that the majority of the construction is done, I can finally sew the pieces together. I did another fitting just to make sure that it fit alright at this stage. Then decided to slow the sleeves onto the coat. This is actually not recommended and I quickly found out why. The sleeves got in the way of everything! Now I'm onto the lining. The facing, or the back of the lapel, which is what you actually see, is attached to the lining. I cut my front pattern piece about halfway through so I could make the facing. Then I cut the rest of the pieces of lining from rayon that he chose. I didn't have enough for the skirt of the coat, so only the body will be lined. After sewing the lining together, I put it inside the coat and started working on the collar next. Like the lapel, the collar needs pad stitching. You know the part of the collar that folds over? That's what needs to be pad stitched. Once all that pad stitching is done, I can sew the collar to the neckline. First to the main fabric, then to the lining. The ends of the collar need to be attached to the lapel. The pattern recommended using fell stitches if I wanted to follow period construction, but I opted for a ladder stitch. Looking back, I could have gotten away with the fell stitch because the thread color and the texture of the fabric would have blended in nicely anyway. To keep the coat looking simple, I stitched the fabric around buttons so the buttons could match the coat. Now I can sew the skirt to the coat and start figuring out the pleats at the back. And finally, I pressed and hemmed the bottom of the coat with a blind hem stitch, then pressed and attached the lining to the coat with a slip stitch.
hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about coat making. I know I did. If you like my time lapse videos and want to see more of my wedding sewing shenanigans, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel. I hope he's in the video. Hehehe. <laughs>